I tried to make my hair pretty and I think I made it worse. Hello, my name is Sylvia and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of 2020. Today I'm going to talk about my top 8 books I read in 2020. I decided to just go with 8 books for this list instead of 10 because why round it up when these 8 were definitely my top favorite books. I tried to rank them from my least favorite to my top favorite but basically it just depends on my mood. So starting at number 8 is Call Down the Hog by Maggie Steepwater. This is the first book in the Dreamer trilogy, which is a spin-off of The Raven Cycle, which is one of my favorite book series ever. It follows the Lynch brothers Declan, Ronan, and Matthew as basically a lot of shit happens to them. Ronan is a dreamer, which means he can take objects out of his dreams, but also living people and animals. But these dreams depend on Ronan because if something were to happen to him, they will fall in an instant sleep. On the other hand, Jordan Hennessy is a dreamer and a thief and she is trying to attain this object that will help her dreams because her dreams are slowly killing her. And on another hand, Carmen Farouk Lane is hunting down dreamers because she believes they are the destruction of the world. This book did not disappoint. I'm so glad we got to see more of Ronan and his brothers and also Jordan Hennessy. She surprised me a lot. I really, really like Jordan. I know a lot of people who really don't care about her and Hennessy, but I love them both. And I'm so glad we're exploring more the world of dreamers since we didn't get to do that as much in the Raven Cycle. At number seven, there's The Wicked King by Holly Black, and this is the second book in the Folk of the Air trilogy. Now, basically, I can't say much about this book without spoiling it, but it follows the action of Jude and Cardin from the first book. Jude is a mortal who one day a fairy comes and kills her parents and takes her and her sisters into the fairy world. Jude, being a mortal, is basically bullied by everyone, but there is one boy in particular, Cardin. He is the youngest prince who basically behaves like an ass because since he's the youngest, he knows he's never going to make it to the throne. But basically, for mortals, there are two ways to be more respected in the fairy world, and that is either to be married to a fairy or to become a knight. Jude's twin sister, Taryn, wants to get married, but Jude does not want that path. Suddenly, the prince of fairy who is going to become king, I forgot his name, hires Jude to be a spy. And that's basically the premise of the first book, but the second book I really adored because we finally get to see Cardin's redemption arc. I read Queen of Nothing, the third book last year as well, but I think The Wicked King is my favorite of the series just because so much happens between Jude and Cardin and I'm a sucker for romance. Jude is a badass, she can stab me and I will thank her. So many things happen in this book, so many plot twists, which it just blows your mind. And of course, I love this quote that says, I have heard that for mortals, the feeling of falling in love is very like the feeling of fear. Your heart beats fast, your senses are heightened, you grow lightheaded, maybe even dizzy. Is that right? And there's this other saying. If you know, you know. At number six is Dart and Smoke Bone by Lainey Taylor. I read this at the beginning of the year and I don't remember much, but I remember absolutely adoring it. It follows Karu, a girl who doesn't really know who or what she is. She was raised by chimeras, these beastly creatures all her life and has no idea who her real parents are. She and her family, the chimeras, live in this alternate world where you open a door and it's like there. But suddenly, angels descend from the sky and are marking the doors with their hands, leaving handprints. And suddenly, they close the path to this world and Karu cannot go back home. So it is known that angels and chimeras are basically enemies. One of the angels, Akiva, is suddenly drawn to Karu for some reason. And well, the book basically develops from there. Karu trying to get back home and Akiva knowing he can't let her. Lainey's Taylor writing style is incredible it's so beautiful it feels like you're reading poetry i will never get over this book like i said i don't remember much for some reason now there is this huge plot twist in the middle which absolutely drove me crazy it was insane this book is so good it's so so good 
and the ending is so heartbreaking i still haven't read the second and third book in this trilogy yet but i'm definitely going to this year i don't know why i didn't read it there is literally this huge cliffhanger and i have to know what happens but basically angels and demons i love that my next favorite book of 2020 is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. This book follows our main character, Saoirse, who is training to be the queen's next royal spy. Suddenly, when she is on a task, her best friend is killed by shamans, and her whole life turns upside down when she discovers she has some new abilities. Saoirse is summoned to the domain of the Spider King, which to get to, she has to cross the Dead Wood, which is a forest possessed by souls, and the Spider King is the only one who has control of it. War is looming and Sergia has to master her new abilities before it is too late and it takes everything she loves. I love the world building of this book. It is the world building that absolutely captured me. You know I prefer characters to plot and world building, but this world building was utterly fantastic. I also adore Sergia and there's a prince. And I can't wait for the second book Broken Web to come out this year. Fourth in this series is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I'm sure you've heard about this book, but in case you haven't, it's about a transgender boy called Yadriel who comes from Mexico and a family of brujas. So apparently brujos and brujas have different powers and they're supposed to go through this ceremony called Los Quinces, which is to prove La Santa Muerte welcomes you. Yadriel doesn't go through his quintas because his family is scared that the Santa Muerte won't accept him. So Yadriel decides to do it on his own with his cousin Maritza. Suddenly when Yadriel's cousin dies, he wants to help out to find him. So when he goes to raise his spirit, he accidentally brings back the ghost of the bad boy from school. If that plot didn't intrigue you, I don't know what will. I absolutely adore the Latinx representation in this book. It is so, so good. It made me, I felt so freaking identified. Yadriel's mother was the only one who actually supported him and she was the one who was helping the rest of her family understand. But when she dies, the family just doesn't try anymore. The writing is marvelous. I admit the plot twist, I could kind of see it coming. The ending was a bit confusing, but that's just because I'm a very dumb reader. So, Julian. I adore Yadriel and Julian. They have become some of my favorite characters ever. Basically, read this book. At number three is The Year of the Witch by Alexis Henderson. This book follows our main character, Emmanuel, in the land of Bethel, where the prophet's word is law. Emmanuel's very existence is blasphemy due to the wrongs that her mother did. Emmanuel does her best to worship the father and follow the holy scriptures, but is somehow lured into the dark wood where witches reside. These witches gift Emmanuel the journal of her mother, and she finds out a lot of secrets that she has kept. When Emmanuel goes back to the forest, she realizes she made a big mistake and suddenly plagues are falling upon Bethel. Plagues of blood, blight, darkness, and slaughter and Emmanuel realizes that she has to be the one to stop them. This book completely took me by surprise because it has that horror mystery vibe. I read it in October, okay? And I am not a fan of horror movies and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to feel about this book, but it had the perfect amount of scary. There's witches and it feels like a covenant. Ezra. I love him. He is so strong and so brave and is completely sure of what he believes in and I respect that so much. Emmanuel is also so, so strong. She finds out a lot of things about her family throughout the book and she knows she has to be the one to break the curse. This book, it's, it's, it's perfect. I wouldn't change anything about it. I, I absolutely love it. Five stars. Number two on this list is History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. History is All You Left Me follows our main character Griffin when his ex-boyfriend Theo dies in a drowning accident. Now Griffin and Theo had broken up because Theo went to college all across the country in LA when Griffin stays in New York. But Griffin had no doubt that they were still in love and when the time was right, they would be together again. And now the only person who understands how he's feeling was Theo's recent boyfriend, Jackson. 
this book bounces back from history and today today being where griffin is attending theo's funeral and history where we see theo and griffin's relationship come to life for the first time this book is also written in second point of view i'm actually not sure if that's how it's called but basically in present time griffin is talking to theo as if he's still there or as if he's talking to his ghost this book is so tragic yet so beautiful i cried five six maybe seven times reading this book it made me realize so many things about relationships as well that not everything is as we think at the beginning we think jackson is a bad person because he doesn't want theo to talk to griffin anymore but that just came from an insecurity of jackson's part and the same with griffin he didn't want theo to have a new boyfriend because he was supposed to be in love with him i absolutely adore jackson and griffin's relationship at the end it starts off very rough obviously it's kind of awkward and they may still hate each other because they both love Theo, but they also realize Theo loved them both. I don't want to say this is my favorite Adam Silvera book because it's very, very hard to choose. They Both Died at the End is an exceptional read and more happy than not, made me rethink a lot of my life. Basically, I can't choose a favorite Adam Silvera book. I hold them all very dearly to my heart. Adam Silvera's writing style, it makes you feel something. And my number one book for 2020 is obviously Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Chain of Gold is the first book in the Last Hour series, which is the fourth series set in the Shadow Hunter world and it is sent in 1903 London. It follows Cordelia Carstairs, a shadow hunter whose father has been accused of a crime he didn't commit. So she and her family move to London where she encounters childhood friends James and Lucy. In hopes of preventing the family's ruin, Cordelia's mother wants to marry her off, but Cordelia is determined to be a hero rather than a bride. When suddenly a shocking series of demon attacks devastate London, they are forced into quarantine. But these demons are nothing like they've ever seen before because they are walking in plain daylight. So Cordelia, Lucy, and James and their friends and family come together to try to solve this mystery. Now, you probably didn't know because this is my first video, but I love the Shadowhunter world and Chain of Gold is my favorite so far of any book Cassandra Clare has written. Basically, I'm trash for the characters. I would literally die for Alistair Cordelia, Matthew, Christopher, Thomas, James, Lucy, like everyone, everyone. They are so precious to me. Now, it is a big cast of characters, but that's precisely why I love it so much. I am very attached to characters. I prefer characters than plot 100%. And all these characters are so different with so many flaws, so many traits that define them. They're so strong. I love them. Something I love as well in this book is the flashback. I am a sucker for a book that goes from present time to past time and this book includes a lot of flashbacks following different characters point of view. So these were my top books of 2020. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully I'll upload my next video next week. So see you then.